Oki on Brew Talk. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching Brew Talk on City Spending Brews. And today we're talking about oak, putting wood in stuff. <laughs> This comes up a lot, and we actually don't do a lot of oaking, but we have done some behind the scenes where we didn't really, you know, display it. So I wanted to go over some questions that people have had and get into how to do it, why to do it, when not to do it, how much is too much, what's the right way, what's the wrong way, because there's a million questions out there. Jody Shepard, how do you get the oak back out of the bottle? I was going to back flavor with cinnamon and clove, but not sure how to get it out rather than racking. Should I put it in a bag with a string and fish the bag out? Yes, actually, probably the best way to do it. If you're oaking in a bottle, it's more complicated. Um, I normally end up oaking in a bottle. I don't know why, but that's pretty much the way I do it. I use the spirals and we just drop it in the neck of the bottle. And usually I don't worry about it because it gets drank before I can actually be concerned about this wooden oak thing sticking in the bottle. However, the issue here is, is if you don't think about it beforehand, you're stuck. <laughs> that piece of wood is its shape and size dry but then it expands. Yeah, but they usually fit out the neck even Once it expand. gets larger. And so sometimes, depending on the size of your opening for your bottle, it may be more difficult to get out. Um, if you're doing a conditioning style secondary fermentation oaking, where it's in a wide mouth or bag. something, then no big. Let it float. Because it'll, really matter, it'll get out easy. It's when you're actually dealing with a, a narrow aperture that it may be a problem. Valco 4084. I made Acerglin this year with a wild fermentation honey bug. Not really sure what a honey bug is. Never heard of that. But it's probably like a ginger bug, which is actually just yeast and bacteria. It came out okay, but then I added bourbon soaked oak wood I cut and toasted. That was the difference maker, and it was an instant hit with family and friends. Have you done anything with toasted oak or fruit wood yet? Love your videos. First, thanks. Uh, second, we've done a lot of oak stuff, and I see people doing dry oaking, and I've seen them soak it in something, like in a bourbon or a vodka, and then either put that liquid in, or the wood, or both. Now, if you're going to do the liquid, I would wait till you're in conditioning phase, secondary fermentation, whatever you want to call it. We like conditioning. Um, because if you put that into the primary, you could actually bring your alcohol level up high enough to kill off the yeast or make them stop. So... I wouldn't do it there. Um, I also don't like to oak until you're in conditioning phase. And there's a reason you don't, winemakers actually don't like to ferment in wooden barrels simply because the yeast attached to wood particles and um, ingredients and they latch onto that. And then when you wash out the lease at the end or you remove the lease, you're getting rid of a lot of the stuff that the wood adds. I learned that today when I was doing some research. Anyway. Um, Travis Harrelson, have you considered aging in a small oak barrel? Not sure if you're interested, but it could lead to an interesting result if you want to try the Boucher again. I see where he's going with this, and we get this all the time. And it's been a wonderful marketing ploy for a couple of companies to put out those little tiny oak barrels saying, you can age it and blah, blah, blah. Now, if you are aging something like uh, white whiskey, things like that, those can work, okay? Here's the problem. You're trying to simulate something that's usually done on a large scale over a long time. Let me explain. 55 gallon barrel, right? It's big, this big around. Sits outside in Texas, Scotland, Ireland. In a warehouse. In a warehouse somewhere. Um, Tennessee, Kentucky. They sit outside. That's the secret. For a long time. When I say a long time, I don't mean months. I mean years. Over that time, when it's hotter, it can expand, it goes into the wood. When it gets colder, it contracts and comes out of the wood. I might actually have that part backwards, but it does that think, over the seasons. I think that's, I think that's right. I think that's right. Um, as it goes into the wood, it takes in all of the things that are in the wood, and then as it comes back out, it mixes and melds back together with itself. And that cycle happens over and over. If you put it in a small barrel and keep it, you know, on your counter, that doesn't happen. All it's doing is it's just soaking into the wood that's nearby, which does induce some flavor, but not the same. It's also about contact area. When it's a huge, huge barrel and there's 55 gallons in there, you're only getting so much contact area. So it takes a longer time for this to happen, but that's a good thing because it's mellowing and it's aging as it goes. Um, actually, somebody does quarter cask, uh, Lafroig. 
does a quarter cask and now they do this on purpose they age it normally then they use a quarter sized cask and they put some in there and then they mix that back into a batch of the regular stuff now that's an interesting concept because they are getting the long time aging but they're also adding a quick age which really just pulls out a lot of the wood phenolics and things like that it's the flavors more so of the wood more so than like the vanillins and things like that okay so i don't recommend aging in the small barrels and here's the here's the main reason most of them leak they just don't really work as well. You will get the exact same experience if you put it in a bucket, drop in a couple of spirals, or drop in some wood chips. The exact same result. If anything, it'll be better with the wood chips and the spirals, mostly because you have access to see it, get a sample quickly, and it, they extract a little faster. The, the, it's, it's interesting because with these, you don't want long-term contact because it can actually overpower so you want that shorter contact. So having a higher surface to mass ratio makes it happen a little quickly and you can get that wood flavor in some of the linens and things like that without overdoing it. Okay, Nathaniel Sizemore, what are you talking about oaking? Do you mean putting in oak wood chips, charred oak wood chips, putting it into an oak barrel or cask or putting it into a charred oak barrel or cask? I have a source for the casks and barrels but want more information about the process before spending the money. Thank you. I think we just covered that. <laughs> But a good question that he does have in here is the charred part. You can use uncharred, but it's not the same. You want charred wood. You want, I mean, really, you want to buy stuff that's been made to do this. You can buy pieces of actual barrels. You can buy the, the spirals we've found have been great. You can determine the char and the type of wood, and they're all pretty consistent. So that way you, you know what it's going to do. You can make your own. I mean, people have made, you know, chunks of, of oak. We got a gift of one. That we have to use still. Yeah, Warren Bradford sent us a bunch of this. These are rum-soaked wood chips that he preserved in a in a bag. And wow, I mean, somebody gave them to him, and he doesn't he didn't know what to do with them, so he sent them to us. We are going to use these. He probably forgot all about it by now. He also he made not. this really cool top that I will show you at the end of this video. Okay. So. That's the basic sound. You want to have a charred wood because it gives more flavors off, okay? I'm gonna talk about what oak actually does, okay? And this, I'm reading from this because I, I didn't write this. This is actual scientific stuff, real factual information, okay? Um, not that what I usually say isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get that out. But this I actually got from a knowledgeable website. Um, the chemical properties of oak can have a profound effect on wine. Phenols within the wood interact produce vanilla type flavors. Now this, this when they say wine, they mean wine and mead, okay? It affects both. Phenols within the wood interact produce vanilla type flavors and can give the impression of tea notes or sweetness. The degree of toast on the barrel can also impart different properties affecting the tannin levels as well as the aggressive wood flavors. They hi the hydrolyzable tannins, ooh, say that three times fast. The hydrolyzable Hydrolyzed, yeah, I did. Hydrolyzable tannins present in that spore in wood, known as elagatannins, elagatannins, are derived from linen structures in the wood. They help protect the wine from oxidation and reduction. So that's the other thing. Because you put it in wood, this is why they use wood and not other surfaces. So it works like a preservative. It, exactly. Cool. It keep, prevents oxidization over time. So that's a great thing for small home brewers. You really don't have the means to do this. Putting it in that one gallon barrel is not going to do the same thing as what we are talking about here. Okay? Flavor notes commonly used to describe wines exposed to oak include caramel, cream, spo smoke, spice, and vanilla. And that includes wines, meads, even up to, you know, whiskeys and rums and things like that. And, and brandy too. Um, oak chips. See, so here we go. Oak chips have the benefit in, of imparting intense oak flavoring in a matter of weeks, while traditional oak barrels would need a year or more to convey similar intensity. Notice they didn't talk about the other stuff, the spice, the vanilla. It's harder to get from oak yeah. chips without a long time. Um, critics claim that oak flavoring from chips tends to be one-dimensional and skewed towards the vanilla extract with the wine still lacking some of the physical benefits that barrel oak imparts. I agree. It's not a real way to oak things. It's kind of a cheat. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but it, it kind of is. 
The but only if way... you have your own warehouse and you have access oh, to absolutely. full size barrels, can go... I can I rent some space? Yeah, for real. <laughs> But in all honesty, the way to get real true oaking is to use a full cask, put 55 to 90 gallons in there, depending on the size of the cask, and let that sit for a few years. Other than that, you're kind of doing half, I can't use the word, method, and it's not the same, okay? And depending on what method you use is how, whether it's half or a quarter or a tenth, but we find just taking a bottle, sticking a spiral in there, letting it sit for three or four weeks will actually change that wine, okay? If that's the basic question here, it does. And in many cases, it'll mellow out extra ethanol. It can make a, an overly sweet wine less sweet. It can make a dry wine seem a little sweet. So it, it's kind of a magical thing. And we're gonna use it more often. I just haven't been for no apparent reason other than we just haven't really oaked much stuff, which you would think, me being a whiskey guy at all, <laughs> Hello, but uh, that's where we're at on oaking. So it is something that we plan to do, and it is really easy to do. I mean, you really do just drop it in, seal it up, wait a month, try it again. Now, a lot of them say, oh, give it like four days or a week. I'm like, yeah, no, I've, I've done stuff for like three weeks and barely noticed a yeah. difference. So you need time. Sometimes like even two months, three months can really impact that flavor the way you want it to be. Um, I'm sure we didn't cover all the questions that people are going to have on this, and I'm sure somebody's going to ask something that either we didn't cover or maybe we don't know. But you know what? If I don't know, I will find out. So ask questions in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Right. Top, 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 So, as I said, this is our gift top. I don't know if you can see that logo, but it's burnt in there, which I think is super cool. And then he has a little stamp of the same logo with the sealing wax for the box. And there, it was in this little velvet bag. Uh, and the presentation on everything this. Everything is so cool. And this look is at like the top. 12 out of 10. He made this. The intent is to put it on like a glass or something. Yeah, I did a video oh, yeah. of it, but it's great. And I did a video of it on the bottom of the glass, and I think I posted it in the VIP club. So if you are a member of the VIP club, scroll through there and you can find it. But it's it's awesome. So thank you so much for this again. Thank you for the oak chips as well. We will put those in a video soon, and we're just going to stare at this top now. So uh, you want to read these, or you want me to read these? Here you go. All right. Jody Shepard, how do you get the oak back out of the bottle? I was going to back, bleh, I was going to back fave. Let me try this again. Maybe I'll read the question. 